Hey guys, welcome back to another episode here on the realm. And I'm over here at the site of the Witch Farm project again, where I have finished the excavation of all of the remaining blocks that were here. And uh, this is, has been a long time coming. This has been a project that I've been working on for a number of weeks off and on in between doing other projects and builds here and there. So I'm really relieved to finally be done with the removal of the blocks. And the next step is going to be to uncover the witch huts that are over here encased in obsidian and start building the farms around them. As well as making some kind of a build in the middle here. This is just a temporary platform right now that I have up. And uh, my buddy here, this is one of the original black cats that spawned in one of these witch huts. And uh, I want to ask you guys for some help. I'm having a hard time coming up with a name for this guy. So if you guys have some good name options that you can put down in the comment section to help me out, I'd really appreciate that. Okay, so let's take a quick fly around here. Give you an idea of really how big this area is. It is 300 by 300 blocks. And, um, and I'm planning on putting some other farms in here too. Originally, there was a bit of a river that went through this area. So I'm thinking about also making a drown farm in here. I've never tried to make a drown farm before. Um, but you know how crazy rare tridents are. So I'm thinking about putting that in here as well as some crop farms as well. Okay, let's go ahead and mine some of this obsidian up and, uh, and clear this thing. Okay, so I've removed most of the obsidian that was surrounding the witch hut. You can see it there. And over the next few days, I'm going to be researching different designs on how to make farms out of these witch huts and decide which one is going to work best for us here. But for today's episode, I want to show you a little bit more around the realm. With all the flying and mining that I've been doing over here, I need to restock on rockets, mend some tools, so I'm going to take this opportunity to show you a couple of the other farms that we have around the realm. Let's go ahead and come over here, grab this shulker. It's got a lot of the pickaxes that we've been using to mine this area out. Let's hop in the nether and head over to my base. Home sweet home. It feels good to be back after being away for so long. I'll tell you what. Okay, so let's go on down to the storage room. And uh, let's go ahead and unload on some of the items. Didn't keep a bunch of the resources that we mined out in that latest uh, mining session that was off camera. But some coal, redstone, and some other basic items. Um, got quite a, quite a few diamonds out of that last little chunk. 27 diamond ore. I'll fortune that up at some point. Decent amount of iron. A little bit of gold. Drop all this obsidian off. Got some emerald block. Bunch of coal. Always like to keep all the gravel that I can find so I can make um, some concrete out of it if I'd like. Also keeping a lot of cobble. Because my base mate is actually building a large cobble tower up on the surface. Whenever I show you uh, up on the surface next episode, you'll see that. Need to get some more ender pearls. Get a little bit more food. Getting low on that. Okay. Think that we might be good here. Get the shulker back in over there, and then let's head over to the creeper farm. I will show you that so we can restock on rockets. It's actually connected to my base with this tunnel right here. Just right down here. And you'll see a lot of the beacons that I make. I like to cover them up in stairs to dress them up a little bit instead of just having the, the raw ore blocks that power it shown. And this one is probably my favorite beacon design that I've put together. Really cool looking, I think. So right over here is where we will get up to the creeper floor. Up this bubble elevator here. 
and here we are. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna cut right here and be right back. I normally have this place really dark so it can maximize spawning, but I'm gonna light it up a little bit so I can show it off a little bit better. So I went ahead and lit up this area so we can see Randall a little bit better as I'm showing you. And this farm is actually built into a mountain. We are inside a mountain right now. Here's a map that gives you an idea of what's going on. We're right down here, and this is a tower on the top of the mountain where we AFK to get the best rates on this farm. By making it in the mountain, my idea was to AFK at top of this tower, and it would minimize the amount of area that we have to mob proof to get really good rates out of this farm. So we'll go up there in a minute and show you around. I want to tell you a little bit about this farm. It uses, you can see some falling down over there, but we'll see the really, really good rates whenever I get up in that tower and I'll load up a camera account and I'll show you how good it can really get. So this uses about nine or 10 spawning platforms and it's covered by different pieces of carpet and iron trap doors that allow creepers and only creepers to spawn in this farm. Because of the different height levels of the different mobs, the carpet in the trapdoor stops other mobs from spawning. And you'll see that I have cats that are trapped in minecarts in the middle of the spawning platforms. Both creepers and phantoms are really afraid of cats. So as they, as they spawn in here, They'll immediately be scared away by these cats and fall down. On the top platforms, they'll actually fall to their death. On the lower ones, they'll just take a little bit of damage, and the magma will do the rest of the damage to kill them off. And because there's trap doors here, they don't realize that it's a fall, and they'll drop right down. So let's go ahead and go up to the tower, and, uh, and I'll show you what it is like up there. And you can see that I've got a minecart running underneath here to suck all of the gunpowder through the magma blocks and put it over into the collection system over there. So you just grab that one right there. Let me go ahead and empty what we got here so we know we've got a fresh batch. Okay, let's go up to the top of the tower and take a look there. So I used mostly quartz in this tower. Use some cyan terracotta and sea lanterns as well. Um, end rods. I like how that looks for chandeliers. I'm really happy with how this thing turned out. Go ahead and head upstairs here. You can kind of get a sneak peek of some of the builds that are around here. There's a tree farm that I'll probably show you at some point. And that is actually the surface of my base. I'll show you that soon. There is a realm mate, James, that's his base right there. And um, the ideal spot to AFK at this farm, like I said, is at the top of this tower. Um, it limits surface spawns and cave spawns. So the maximum number of mobs are spawning on the spawning platforms of the, of the farm itself. But most of this area is spawn proof. All this snow on this mountain was mostly hand placed by me, two layers. Two layers or more of snow will spawn proof an area similar how carpets work. So, uh, so that was a thing. <laughs> Let's head up here. Okay, so this is the top of the tower. You can see I made it open air here so you can fly out if you want. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to load in a camera account and show you the inside of the farm while I'm AFKing up here just so you can get an idea of how it works and the rates that this farm produces. Okay, so with me, AFKing, at the top of the tower, I've loaded in a camera account so we can get an idea of what's going on in the farm as a player is up top. And you can see the kind of rates that this farm produces. You can just see all kinds of creepers raining down here. Let me back up and see if we can see some creepers actually spawn into the spawning platforms. There we go, and get scared off by the cats. Ooh, there's a bunch. There's a big pack of them there. You can see how crazy efficient this farm is. And most farms work on the basis of having the area spawn proof. 
where there's limited places that mobs can spawn. Um, you can see there's some caves here that I didn't find as I was lighting this up because I do play in survival. I'm only showing you this so you can get an idea of what's going on. Um, so there are little spots here and there that aren't lit up that there are going to be some mobs spawning in and you can never really light everything up and get it perfect in your worlds. But this gives you an idea of what you can achieve by getting it the best you can. And this is a really well designed farm by a YouTuber named Logical Geek Boy. He makes a lot of really good farm designs and there's a couple other on this realm that I've made from his tutorials. And I'll put a link in the description if you guys are interested in checking that out and maybe building this in your, uh, your world as well. So I'm going to go ahead back up to my player that's AF King in the top. We'll come back down and we'll see how much gunpowder just this little bit of time has produced. Well, let's go ahead and head on down to the farm floor and see how much gunpowder that little stint netted us here. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So generally just a few minutes up there gives you a good eight, ten stacks of gunpowder. It's that efficient. It's crazy, crazy good. As much as I fly around and use rockets, it's it's a must to have uh to have a farm like this in the world. You can see that the minecart goes over these hopper minecarts that have been pushed in this glass and it just kind of shoots out from this dispenser, the gunpowder over there. I should probably even shut this powered rail off so it'll stop over here and completely empty out the contents. It might even be full. You know, there's quite a bit stuck in there. Okay, we're good. Get to set it on its way. Okay, so I'm going to go up top and do a quick fly around, show you a little bit more about the tower, and I made a little bit of, uh, of pixel art of a uh, creeper up there. I thought it looks pretty cool. So here is the outside of the tower and the top of the mountain itself. You can see I used white stained glass. You kind of see the floors and the stairs and the different layers of the tower. I like to make beacons a center part of a lot of my builds. I just think it really adds to it. And it's always nice to have the beacon effects always active in the places that you are as well. I decided to make this, uh, this pixel art of a creeper. It's using dark prismarine and sea lanterns from uh, my guardian farm. And that's another build that I'll probably show you. Or too long. Not in this episode, but I'll show you that before too long. Okay, let's go ahead and head back into the tower and back to my base. And I want to show you something else over there. So I'll cut back in whenever I get there. Okay, I'm at the end of the tunnel that connects the creeper farm to my base. And I want to show you this little area right down here. This is one of the newest areas of the base that I've made, and it's home to what I like to call some little micro farms. Uh, here's a trash incinerator where you can put your items in there, and you can see that I stocked up on gunpowder so I can make some, uh, some rockets here. Um, you can put items in there that you don't want, and there's not much that I don't keep. You can see that I hoard pretty much every item in this game. But say you're coming back from like the Enderman farm, you've got an inventory full of ender pearls, or you got rotten flesh, something that uh, you normally would just kind of throw on the ground and despawn. It's annoying if you accidentally walk over it, pick it back up, throw it back out again. So I made this little guy here. You can throw your items in there, and it doesn't immediately destroy them. In case you put your good pickaxe or something like that in there, you have to flick the lever and then it starts emptying out the contents and there's a dropper down there that shoot it into lava and get rid of it so it's just a nifty little little machine to have and this thing here is a concrete and fortune maker where you just kind of hold the blocks that you want to make into concrete or fortune in your offhand hold down right mouse click and then you hold down left mouse click and it just kind of does it 
Um, you can listen to some music, sit back, and just let it do its thing, and it clicks down in here. It's uh, it's a nice thing to have. It's very simplistic. There's definitely bigger machines that make concrete using TNT and pistons that I might get into at some point, but uh, this does me for now. And this is the machine that I am most proud of that is in here. It is an XP machine, and it dispenses uh, bottles of enchanting. And it dispenses exactly 32 bottles of enchanting, which is just enough to fully mend a completely depleted set of wings. And whenever I originally got into uh, trading with the cleric villagers for uh, bottles of enchanting, I envisioned this idea where I'd have some kind of an XP chamber that used a pressure plate or something that you step into and just showered you with XP. But I kind of gave up on it because I thought that it was just, it was too expensive. You know, it wasn't something that, uh, that I could keep fed with enough uh, XP bottles. But then I saw CubFan 135's video on uh, Hermitcraft where he made an XP ATM in, uh, in Hermitcraft 6. And I've basically taken his exact design and put it here in this world. So it uses a redstone torch back there and some dispensers. Whenever you hit the button, it dispenses exactly 32 bottles of enchanting. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and take off that so it doesn't soak up anything. And uh, I'm pretty low on durability on the elytra. Let's go ahead and hit it. See, you go up there pretty quickly. I also have the pickaxe in the hand, so that's soaking up a little bit. So if I didn't have the pickaxe, that would definitely completely restore the elytra. It's just something that's uh, that's handy to have in the base as I'm passing through, and I don't want to go to uh, an XP farm to fully mend up. I can just tap that and uh, and be back to normal. And you can use it for armor and tools. I tend not to just because it uses a little bit more of the XP bottles. You can see that the durability on uh, on tools for diamond is right around fifteen hundred. Um, and it's much less. It's around 430 for wings. So it doesn't take much as far as those XP bottles to fill it up. And I'll go ho over here and kind of kind of show you uh, how I trade to get these guys. Originally, whenever I um, whenever I found XP bottles in the game, I found them pretty darn useless because they're so super rare. And just one of them, I mean, it gives you just no XP at all. You can only get the, these bottles of enchanting from trading with cleric villagers or from finding them in loot chests. And whenever you find them in loot chests, generally it's just like one bottle. But whenever you use them in mass, whenever you have enough emeralds to, to do that, they become extremely useful. I always have some in an ender chest on me as well. If I'm flying out in the end, doing some end busting or just exploring in the overworld and I need to mend up my wings. And I'm, you know, nowhere near an XP farm. I just pop these uh, in the offhand and, uh, and mend myself up really quick. It's a nice thing to have in a world. Um, and the way that I really afford it, of course, is with my crop farms, trading that for emeralds. And I have these guys zombified and cured. So it's only one emerald per one bottle of enchanting. And uh, I've been kind of stocking up on them over here before I put them into long-term storage in my storage room here. And sometime soon, I'm actually going to come out with a tutorial on how the trading mechanics work. For those of you that don't know fully how to customize villagers, tra change their profession, get the right uh, enchanted book that you want, zombifying and curing, all of that good stuff for people that might not know how to use it. That'll become before too long. So I think that I'm actually going to call this an episode. I was going to go over to the zombie pigment gold farm and show you that and mend up my tools that I need to mend up. But I'm going to start by doing the next episode over there. I'm going to call it a night on that one. I appreciate you guys watching. I would really appreciate if you'd hit that thumbs up button. Consider subscribing to see more videos like this in the future. I'll catch you guys in the next one.